Good morning all. This morning, Romeo and Julieta, the White Churchill. Beautiful cigar. Got a lovely fragrance to them. Nice and sweet. Got a little bit of uh, cinnamon and a little bit of clove. Very, very nice. tasting particularly good. It's got a, an, actually a very good uh, car note. Um, I don't usually detect the note of a cigar that I'm smoking in the room when I'm smoking it, unless it's quite uh, piquant. Um, and this is, it's got a really lovely tanginess to it, a richness, almost a sour tanginess. It's delightful. It's very Cuban-esque. Holding a white Churchill it does have its uh, attractions. A really nice, hefty Nicola. And in the words of LD, Lawrence Davis, it makes you feel like a man. You want to see a man enjoying his cigars? Have a look at Sauter Cigars, S A U T T E R. Sauter Cigars, they've got a couple of branches here in London. Um, and the owner, Lawrence Davis, 
Um, as I say, you want to see somebody enjoying your cigars, watch him. He's got a, a fair few videos on his channel. He's been doing it for a while now. Um, he, he loves his cigars. Um, he used to have, he has some nice, some really knowledgeable people on who join him to smoke cigars. I believe he does um, seminars as well, you know, teaching people how to smoke a cigar. It reminds me of my uh, pipe video of how to smoke a pipe. Just put it in your mush and smoke it. But I'm being facetious. Of course, there's a. It's good to get tips on how to start. Certainly, smoke, smoking a pipe. Um, guidance helps you. I think we've all benefited from the various tutorial videos that are on YouTube. We've all struggled with the initial smokes of a pipe. And I did when I first started smoking a cigar too. It's not that I hadn't smoked a cigar before. Um, probably 15 to 20 years ago, I dabbled a little bit with a few cigars. I smoked... Um, I definitely smoked Romeo and Juliet, um, Romeo y Julieta, um, I think it was the number three Tubos. I do remember smoking those a few times and enjoying them. Um, I smoked also the Villager cigars, the square, the, the box cut ones. They come, I think, four or five in a box, in a yellow box, they were wrapped in paper. Um, those were nice. Interesting, interestingly, I do recall noticing a flavour difference between one and the other cigar. Um, I think I, I dabbled with cafe creams as well, you know, the little tin boxes, the tiny little tin cigarettos. Definitely had some of those in my youth. Um, but when I first really got into Cuban cigars in a meaningful kind of way, a couple of years ago. Um, I definitely struggled. I went through that period, if you recall, where I was putting sellotape on the head of the cigars. And people were quite incredulous as to why I would do that. But I was going through a period where my cigars were all bitter why that was and I tried everything and I don't know it's very possible I even went through a period where my palate just was off I don't know but somebody suggested that perhaps I'm smoking cigars too wet and that the head of the cigar was becoming too sodden and therefore all of the carbon as you smoke through was gathering at the head and giving me a, a bit of smoke so I um, got to putting tape on the top um, and it seemed to help for a while. Um, I put tape on the top in order to basically be a barrier to stop it getting wet, and it did work. Uh, my cigars were certainly a lot tastier, so I did that for a good few months, and then I slowly weaned off it, unintentionally I think. I don't recall making a, a distinct attempt at removing the tape and seeing how I go. So I'm not quite sure what changed, but certainly we can all do with a little bit of guidance um, in, in, in most things, really. find with a lot of cigars that there is a tipping point, um, often about halfway through the cigar, where the taste does turn, even slightly, and you can still enjoy the rest of the cigar, but I would say that um, a lot of cigars, the, the, the best part of the cigar is the first half, and on some cigars it's the final third. Um, it's just a matter of uh, luck, I think, sometimes, especially with Cubans, and uh, a matter of choice, depending on which cigars you choose. Although, when I compare Cubans to non-Cubans, I think that non-Cubans, sorry, I think Cubans I can smoke further down. I 
uh, truth is it really depends which cigar it is, but um, I think that uh, non-Cubans tend to have a bit more of a robust, if you like, it's a nice way of putting it, I don't want to say harsh, but a bit more of a, a, a robust kind of uh, flavour to them, so towards the end of the cigar it can get a little bit heavy going. very good idea to purge your cigar um, quite frequently which means blowing through the cigar rather than drawing in but blowing through and uh, trying to push smoke through the cigar out the out the burning end out of the cherry and that helps to refresh the flavors in the cigar um, I probably do that every two or three draws actually I'm, that's kind of part of my habit I draw in and I draw out if you like and I push through It certainly helps to keep the cigar fresh and the flavors fresh. Um, so you basically some of that spent carbon that you're drawing into the into the cigar, you want to get rid of it. And hence you want to purge your cigar. That does work. So we had a very nice uh, live session last night, an impromptu live session last night. Um, I think I started it around 11 p.m. I was just in the mood for a YTPC chat. A YTPC chat. odd people on and um, I've done this a few times now we were talking about um, I did a little tour of my my den if you like and um, so I was going through a lot of the pipe tobacco that's just sitting on my shelf uh, using up jars and it's kind of I need to there's a few tins that I really need to jar up and I haven't got any more jars left and uh, yeah I could go and buy more but you know there comes a point where you just got too many jars and you've, I've got some tobaccos which have sat in there for two years um, some even longer two and a half years and I'm just not smoking it um, and I know that we often regret if we give away and then you know you fancy it again um, and that's fine um, but the truth is that if you if you're using airtight containers plastic containers um, Tupperware containers you can just as well put stuff into baggies and leave them in the Tupperware container and they're absolutely fine for quite a long time um, and I'd much rather jar up some McBaron dark twist and know that it's being stored well rather than it's sitting around um, I could I suppose put them into the Tupperware containers which I do do some of my open tins are in there um, but I think a jar is probably the best way to go on some of the blends that I'm smoking regularly so I went through the various jars and I picked out four of the Frogmorton series. I didn't have the original Frogmorton, but I had Town Cellar uh, on the Bayou and the Frog on a Log, I think. So um, I had, I think there's probably an ounce or two in each of those left over. And um, so I put those four jars on the table and I said, We'll do a draw on whoever says I'm in. We added that with 17 people in the in the gore, and um, a guy from Alabama won it. Dance Dad Piper, I think his name was. His handle. Thinks the first time he's been on one of my lives. Um, so it's very cool. So if you want to catch one of my lives, sometimes it's worth it. 
not just for the entertainment, but you might end up getting something. I talked a little bit about the uh, NHS. Had a, a little brush with um, hospital yesterday. I had to take my wife in. Had some issues with her knee. And all in all, um, had a pretty positive experience. It's uh, something which will take time. It'll probably take a few months till she's uh, really right and right as rain. Hopefully that will happen as soon as possible. Um, but uh, yeah, shout out to the NHS. I think we, we, we fared pretty well. It, the whole episode took us four hours. Um, and we had a fair bit done in that time. So, you know, sometimes you could sit in A&E, accident emergency, and wait four hours just to be triaged. Um, but this time, um, we were, I think she was seen by a, an assistant almost immediately. I suppose that was kind of a triage. Um, we saw a doctor, a very nice doctor. Uh, I think we waited for about two hours. And then we straight away got sent to x-ray, back to the doctor, and she's got a referral for an MRI, which is what she's been wanting for a good four months now. And she was, she was getting the runaround, basically, from the doctors, between the hospital and the doctors. So yesterday was a pretty good result. So hopefully in the next few weeks, she'll get that knee MRI, and we'll know what's, what's happening. Somebody commented, it's good to share. I'm not the type of person, as I mentioned in the video, in the live broadcast yesterday, I'm not the type of person to air all my uh, goings on in my private life. Sometimes I do think that people take it a little bit too far. Um, and they really, you know, they share everything that's going on in their lives. And I think sometimes, you know, we have to keep our private lives to ourselves occasionally. Um, and it's kind of a, a mixed bag for me. Sometimes when I say that kind of thing, I feel a bit guilty because for a lot of people, the YTPC or YouTube um, is, is, is the only avenue to, to sort of get in touch with like-minded people. Some people are really out in the sticks or they, they, they have difficulty socializing for whatever reason. So for them, certainly the YTPC is a, an amazing uh, platform uh, to get in touch with other people. I'm not dissing that at all, don't get me wrong. But I do find sometimes people really, really get ultra personal and, and they really sort of share some really intricate, personal, intimate details about their lives. And I think maybe for some people that's right, you know, as I say, I'm not dissing it. But I think sometimes private should be private, you know. You know, the stuff that goes on in the YTPC is awesome. The way the YTPC help each other out. That's amazing. That's just something which is so unique on the YTPC. I have yet to see another YouTube community that comes together to help other people out. And that's just awesome. And I think that's just a, um, it sets an example. It sets, it sets a standard, you know? And it's amazing that it should happen around the pipe. The pipe is such a humble tool. Uh, you, can, you can spend a lot of money on a pipe, but it can be a really humble tool. Just ask Ben. Um, but you could um, spend five bucks on a, on, on a corn cob and that's it, you don't need to spend more and you can just get some Captain Black or some Velvet or some Three Star, Eric and, um, and you're done but being on the YTPC a lot of people, you know, when they do giveaways one of the questions they ask is what does it mean to you to be on the YTPC? And for a lot of people, it's it's the community. You know, pipe smoking for me as well. A big part of it is the YTPC. It's um, not every day do you feel like smoking a pipe, but uh, I'm always really keen to interact with the YTPC, whatever happens, any day, with or without a pipe. So it's pretty awesome. Shout out to Mel Harris. If you haven't seen his channel, go subscribe. A relatively, a relatively new YTPC, but what a presentation style. 
a very effervescent young man. Young man. Um, a very, very uh, entertaining presenter. And he's really right in the throes of Pad and Tad and a generous guy. Um, but to see his uh, enthusiasm for the hobby, it's just, it's captivating and it's, um, it's catchy. contagious. It brings back memories of my, my early sort of first six months or a year um, when you know exploring different tobacco, different pipes, really getting pipes in the whole time and I still get pipes in at a fair rate but from time to time but um, it's just really great to see somebody really uh, thrilled with joining the hobby and joining the YTPC. I don't know how long he's been actually smoking a pipe for. Possibly he's been smoking a long time, but his channel is, is relatively new. Um, but he's just an entertaining guy. So I definitely encourage you to check him out. Ladies and gentlemen, that time has arrived once again for me to park up, have a few more draws on my cigar, and then call it a morning. Been drawing on for 20 odd minutes already. I hope the recording's been good. I've just ashed my cigar. What a plonker. All over my lap. Taking my seatbelt off. And you know, as you do, you lift your arm up to put it around you and back in its place. And I forgot that I had my cigar in my hand. So that my roof has got the best part of my cigar rush. Okay, everybody, thoroughly enjoying this cigar. That's kind of why I'm parked up rather than uh, turning off because I really want to enjoy it just a little bit. So I will catch you all on the next one, whatever that may be about, or whether it's Saturday or maybe before. We'll see how we go. Be safe, be well, and I'll catch you on the next one.